There's nothing on here. This Stop. is it. This whoa, is whoa, it. Whoa, whoa. I was able you. to pinpoint where That's it was. Definitely. Oh. Good evening. The death of a body is not the end. The soul lives on. So followers of the Jewish faith believe. The Quran promises that the pious and the righteous will be in delight and the wicked disbelievers will be in the blazing fire. And Christians have their own ideas of heaven and hell. But on one central point, all religions unite. Death is only the beginning of a new existence. Hard evidence for this belief is at best elusive. But in our program tonight, a retired bingo caller from Birmingham claims to provide that evidence. You soldiers all that now are This is it! This is it! Peter, Bob and Carl are brothers from Birmingham, all on a mission. Oh, this is Does definitely the church, Does without the shadow of a doubt. Their quest to unearth details of Peter's claimed past life as John Raphael, a soldier in the English Civil War of the 17th century. While I live not where I love. About um, 20 years ago, I really became interested in hypnosis. My brother Peter's daughter-in-law uh, agreed to come along for a session. Well, she dropped out for whatever reason, and something was telling me to go for it. Testing, testing. And uh, yeah, I was very hopeful that we may get something. And just relax. And relax. You're now drifting back through your childhood, beyond to a previous life. Where are you? I'm going to church. What's it called? And what's happening around you? St Michael's. I'm praying with my wife Elizabeth and little Izzy. What year is it? 1638. Peter, tell me what your name is and what work do you do? John Raphael. I'm a foot soldier in Cromwell's army. Fire! Ah! Me, a parliamentarian foot soldier with the first foot regiment. And I thought to myself at the time, when people are going to hear this, they're going to think that I'm, that I'm two bricks short of a full load. Peter and Bob began their quest for the truth about Peter's past life in the tiny Nottinghamshire village of Halem. Church. This is it. You've even got the name right. right. And these trees weren't here, I'll tell you, that's 150 years ago. Oh, this is Does definitely the church, is without the same? shadow of a doubt. We went into the church, luckily it was open, and as soon as Peter entered, he said, there's something wrong. Oh, hang on a bit, hang on a bit, what? hang on a bit. What's wrong? You see where that altar is up yes. there? Yeah. Yes. Well, I'll tell you, yeah. 350 years ago, the altar was this end. This end? So, Why would I mean, you can see, the pews have actually been changed complete, well, I wouldn't, completely I wouldn't. around. Baffled by the fundamental change, <laughs> Peter and Bob sought out church warden Richard Brown. That altar's been there since the church was built, what, 700 or over years ago. It, it's never moved. The altar has been there all the time. However, working on a hunch, Richard uncovered old plans of Halem Church. But in 1890s, the church was altered. So when John Raphael walked into the church in his day, he would look to his right and there would be the altar. So Peter would be uh, correcting what he was saying. Are you OK, Peter? Encouraged by this success, the brothers scoured the graveyard. We were looking for a name. We were looking for my name, John Raphael. I was drawn to one particular grave. What's wrong with it, then? I'm not happy about this grave at You're all. Not happy about what? I feel as I'm going to throw up. It's now I've looked at a lot of the other graves, it's not and I have old. no problem at all. But this one is bothering me. We bent down and we scratched away the first piece of moss where we hoped the initial would be. It's, up here somewhere. it's not going to be a J ship. That it's, is it's a, a J oh coming up. Goodness. That's a J. And then an O, H N. And by this time, I was getting very excited. Go on, Rob. It's Try the, the John. next. Try the next. Oh, if the next one's an R, well, I, I don't... Jesus. And the first initial that came up on the surname was R. 
And I was like, oh dear, oh dear. If I'm correct, if it is my right. drive, the next one will be an A, won't it? It can't be right. It's too good. What we can do an without an A? <laughs> it's coming. I don't want to know this. Oh, oh dear. No, no, it's oh. a no, it's a no. I was quite relieved that it wasn't me. You can't know. get much closer, can you? You can't. <laughs> it seemed the trail had gone cold. Peter agreed to undergo further regression to see what details might emerge of his army exploits. Beginning to see where you are. I was asking general questions to Peter to gather information for our research. He suddenly became agitated and moving about on the, on the seat he was on. Tell me, what's going on? The soldiers are the fighting. I remember that myself and the rest of the pikemen we were lined up in a straight line. And um, we had been tanked up. Uh, things were a bit hazy with all the beer we'd poured down our throats. I remember that we had our pike staffs at the ready. We attacked Newbury on the 17th of September, 1643. What else do you see, Pete? <laughs> All these soldiers are fighting. He appeared to be in a somewhat desperate fight and struggle. He was throwing himself about and shouting. Then everything went black. The Battle of Newbury is recorded by historians and at the time has been fought on the 27th of September. But it was definitely the 17th of September. So we've got a shortfall of some 10 days from what's claimed. One reason for that might be there was a change in calendar in 1752 when we actually went from the Julian Gregorian calendar and we lost 10 days. Another beautiful day for it, lads, as usual. Spurred on by another hit, Peter and Bob were joined by younger brother Carl as they expanded their mission to include Scotland. Believing he'd been stationed in the border regions, Peter and the brothers were determined to track down his campsite. Yeah, should we have fields over there? It just, just looks like fields over there. Oh, there's the train oh, to the right. Yes. Just through the right now, when I was on guard on the mount, close. When I was walking along, then, yes. the, then the tree that I remember seeing is in front of me. I look tell you what, look, look at the this. trees. Just look at oak this. trees. Oh. It's hardly Strong changed. Oak trees. Hardly changed in all those years. Look at that. This has got to. There's nothing on here. This is it. This is it. I was able to pinpoint where it was. Definitely. Oak trees again. This is it. As we got to the edge of the um, embankment, that's when the ravine appeared, and my initial reaction was, it hasn't changed at all in the last 350 years. I couldn't believe it. There's this river. You see, it's just a stream the river used to be quite right high. Down, yeah. you couldn't up, yeah. Yeah. I remember that we would sit around the campfire, we'd play cards, sing songs, we'd also carve initials on trees. However, despite Peter's enthusiastic claims, local historians believe no such campsite existed in the Haddon area. Well, the brothers came to see me about three or four years ago um, and told us about this, this campsite, uh, but uh, our records had no information about campsites at all. Come on then, guys, let's go look. Let's have a look at this. Undeterred, the brothers armed themselves with metal detectors to see what evidence they could unearth. And I'm bringing us to this, to this site. We've started to do some metal detecting. And these are some of the articles, or the artifacts that are coming out of the ground. We appear to have two musket balls, possibly from the Civil War period. A love token, which is a, a, used to be a coin, but had a, an initial stamp to it. Left hand, I've got part of a broken spur. Well, they were all scattered around. Oh, down here. Most of the foot soldiers were along yeah. here. So could these artefacts mean that the brothers had discovered a previously unknown Civil War campsite? We're actually left with some quite convincing information, I think. Musket balls, uh, a spur here, some of the buckles and things. Do certainly argue that we're looking at a campsite where people could have camped overnight during this Civil War period. The next discovery was when Peter's story was featured on television. I was watching the time and place on television and the camera went to a man that I recognised as my father in a previous life. 
Peter? We were in the hospi um, hospitality suite, and uh, yes. after a few minutes, the producer said to me, Pete, there's a phone call for you, if you can take it in that booth next door. He said, it's from your daughter. Now, at that particular time, I thought that he meant my real-life daughter, Karen, who lives in uh, near Loughborough. Well, I picked the phone up. And I said, I'm really not a loony, and I'm phoning from London, and I was your daughter in a previous life. Now, my first reaction was, this woman is stark raving mad. I said to Barbara, do you remember on either your fifth or your sixth birthday on the farm? She said, yes. I said, can you remember what I made you? She said... Uh, for my sixth birthday, he made a horse out of wood. I said, that's correct. I said, what else? And put green and yellow ribbons around it. <laughs> Happy birthday! Could Barbara Hartfield really be the daughter of John Raphael? <laughs> Peter is convinced. She's mentioned a couple of things that she couldn't possibly have known about unless she was my daughter. Back on the road, Peter and Bob head for London and the Clink Prison in pursuit of their latest lead. Mm. This, this could very well be the well, prize. Well, it's, it's apparently on the side, the Black the Friars. Entrance, you said Black Friars. When I yes. was thrown down the steps, it was very similar to this, Rob. And I you said down, didn't you? This is down. All. Ooh, Arrested nice. after a pub brawl, Peter suspects he was jailed in the Blackfriars area. Rosemary Smith, lecturer at the Clink Museum, joined the brothers. Some trouble started with some of the locals in there. I remember furniture being thrown around. Mm. And the next thing I remember is coming in a place very similar to this. This might be the right place. Mm. Being thrown down some stone steps and one rips into my thigh. And the pain was terrible. If you were caught drunk and disorderly, which, which you were, yeah. or if you were a debtor, this is the place that you would have been thrown yeah, in. <laughs> we're still searching for more evidence, and I know that the truth is out there. This is my quest to come to a conclusion. We've got to find Jan Raphael, and the evidence is out there somewhere, and we will find it. It might take years. So. What's now, Pete? We've done the clink. Yep. Blackfriars. Yeah. And you've had some strong feelings in there. That's right. And what do you reckon to? I Where think do we go next? Our next venture should be back to Colmstock in Devon. Yes. Because the last time we were there. Yes. I remember seeing this line. Yes. Oh yes, I remember. And if Peter Hume really did have a past life, maybe he'll have another life after this one. He might even visit Birmingham one day on a quest to learn about the life of Peter Hume and end up watching a rerun of this program. In part